Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner and up for review right now, we have the Scanspeak 18WU Illuminator 7 inch midwoofer. This is a beast of a drive unit and just a beautiful, beautiful drive unit to observe in the wild. If you can catch it in its natural state, you just stand and stare at it. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, I've used this drive unit in my car uh, in a couple different iterations and have always really like the performance of it and finally had the opportunity to provide some high level test data on it. So that's what we're going to do today. And with that said, let's jump into it. All right, folks, we are at my website, aaronsaudiocorner.com, ScanSpeak Illuminator 18WU 7 inch midwoofer review. So let's kind of blow through some of these things, some of the upfront stuff. Uh, 675 a pair. So these are not cheap woofers by any stretch of the imagination. However, they do have a lot of use and in my opinion they hold their value pretty well so let's start off with some of the uh the xmax stuff because that's what a lot of people want to know according to the iec standard per my measurement from the clipple distortion analyzer 2 the one-way linear excursion for this 7-inch midwoofer is 8.5 millimeters. Now, it is worth noting that I tested this back in like 2013, maybe 2012. It's been a while now, maybe even 2011. And I measured it to be about 9.1 millimeters. So 0.6 millimeters difference to me is kind of trivial when you're talking about this long stroke. And I will say that this is the longest linear excursion per that standard that I have seen to date. Now, certainly there are other companies that say that they have longer linear excursion, but those are typically physical measurements instead of actual electromechanical measurements produced from the clipple machine. So if you're looking at another company's specs, make sure that it's apples to apples. There's is probably just a uh, voice coil height gap overhang delta and probably not gonna be as high as this scan speak. So that's one big benefit that this speaker has going for it. And kind of keep going down. So you can see that the inductance is uh, very, very low and well-maintained for this drive unit. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, keep going. Frequency response. So frequency response for this speaker is not quite as linear as some that I have tested, but it's pretty linear it's when then plus or plus or minus one and a half db from about so i'm gonna say that's 60 hertz to two kilohertz uh with some kind of bump going on here and i think this dip on axis if i recall correctly from measurements years back is due to the uh compliance from the or i'm sorry the edge surround and the cone um can't think of the word i'm looking for here but basically when they're kind of operating out of phase uh, let's keep going. Actually, I also want to mention the breakup. The breakup is really low. It's within about 5 dB. Now, some speakers will have, or some driving units will have a breakup that is plus 7. A couple of them that I've tested recently are about plus 7. And then others will be plus 10 or plus 15 dB. And when they get to that high, that's very hard to get rid of passively or electronically and that will creep into the on-axis and off-axis measurements and cause issues in directivity when you're trying to match polar patterns uh, on and off axis. So that's something that this ScanSpeak speaker does quite well is it keeps the breakup modes very very low and instead of having it over one frequency it just spreads it out over a couple octaves. So that's some people may not like that but I think that's a, a good design. And let's look at the linearity on and off axis. So again, it's pretty good until around the two kilohertz region where you start again having that breakup, but it's pretty mild. And this breakup region is, you know, you can calculate that with a uh, six or seven inch woofer. You're going to likely cross it in that 1600 to 2.5 kilohertz region anyway. So this stuff is going to be outside of that and it's low enough in nature that it's not going to cause any major headaches. The on-axis sensitivity is measured at about 88.7 dB, so almost 89 dB, which is pretty dang good for a speaker with, actually it's really good for a speaker with this long of linear throw at eight and a half millimeters one way to still have almost 89 dB sensitivity. is quite remarkable in my opinion. A harmonic distortion. So the mid-range distortion at about 101, 100 dB or so is under 1%. Uh, below or above 100 hertz except for this area where there's that compliance issue again with the edge cone 
and the uh, or edge of the cone and the surround uh, behavior. But I honestly, I can't tell you if this is an issue or not. Uh, and it's still within 3% THD at 100 dB. I know some people have actually said that adds warmth to the sound. I don't know if I would agree with that. I would t generally think that lower distortion is always a good thing. So I don't know that this is a problem or not, but it's something worth mentioning. However, worth noting is also their very low distortion in the mid bass region. They don't hit THD of 3% until about 60 Hertz. And at, that's just really, really good at 100 dB, 101 dB. That's really quite remarkable. Uh, IMD distortion overall is pretty low again until you get to the two kilohertz region that's when things start to get out of hand this is with a fixed bass tone at 40 hertz and if you cut this off at 80 hertz you can see the imd is still pretty low uh, and then when you get above three kilohertz that's when it starts to creep up a little bit higher and higher so use within the typical pass band i would say with this speaker you can go as low as 60 hertz without any issues up to two, kil two kilohertz uh, maximum Multi-tone distortion, about 102 dB, uh, with the compression mainly showing up in the 100 hertz to 200 hertz region and a spike here uh, around 900 hertz. And then if you limit that band, so this was within the band of 80 hertz to 1600 hertz, and then if you widen that band, I should say, to 40 hertz to 3200 hertz, the max SPL is about 99.6 dB, and that's pretty good. They've got this breakup mode here. So if you are going to cut the response at about two kilohertz and you can play it down to 40, 50, 60 hertz, you, this speaker can go quite loud. Uh, the distortion here is really good. The distortion profile is still really good, even with it playing down to 40 hertz. I mean, you're still below 1% uh, distortion. And okay, so my bottom line, in my opinion, this, I personally have used this as a mid-bass from 60 hertz to about 300 hertz. I've used it uh, in sealed enclosure and I've also used it a periodic and infinite baffle in the car, believe it or not. Great, great speaker. The mid-range distortion is a little bit peaky around the one kilohertz area, so that may be something to keep an eye on. But even with it playing 100 dB, it's still within you know two, 3% THD, so it's relatively uh, low when you're listening at that high of a level. Uh, so as a two-way speaker, should be able to play this 60 to 2 kilohertz completely fine. And that's really where this shines. It has a wide bandwidth, unlike being able to play only down to 80 or 100 hertz, you know, but with very low distortion through the mid-range. It has very low distortion through the mid-range, and it can play down to, you know, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, something like that. Obviously, the enclosure is going to matter. Your electronic filter is going to have an effect on... Uh, how low this plays but in general this is a great two-way speaker and an excellent mid-bass speaker in a three-way design that's going to do it for this review i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys appreciate it and make sure to go to my website to read more gory details about all the inner workings and the test results a great drive unit when used within its limits and with that said i'm going to go i'll talk to y'all later peace